Hey guys, today I'll show you how to do a 4K product rendering from a 1K image you found online while maintaining the text and increasing and creating shadows, detail, highlights, and even transparencies on a completely brand new AI background. Check it out. Okay, like many projects, we start with some type of inspiration or reference image and then our subject that we want to enhance, transform, photograph, whatever. And so we have our Talisker bottle and our inspiration. So the client wants us to put this uh, Talisker in this type of environment with the splash, all right? So we want to hold on to this for now, but first I'll show you what you can do with the new in paint background that's in automatic 1111. And so most of the tutorials you'll probably find will be just the fact that you drag this in here and you put bottle splashing background or something like that. Oh, we have to match the resolution, of course. And it'll do an okay job of dropping a subject into an environment with the perspective that matches. What I found when I was doing another bottle was that I got a lot of this stuff that comes off. And also you can see that it, it kind of ghosts another bottle around it often for some reason. So we have to work around that. Also, I just don't find that this is very convincing. We can use this, especially if we have a background and you want to quickly mask something, but it, it's easier still to just use Photoshop in many cases. So the first thing we'll do now, sorry, the second thing, we'll go to image to image and we're going to get a prompt by clicking our paperclip symbol up here. And then that will automatically take our inspiration image and give us a prompt, which says a bottle of Coca-Cola. So we're just gonna remove that and put in bottle of Talisker. And we don't want gold bubbles. We just want, let's say, fine bubbles. And black bound 3D render photorealism. We don't want photorealism either, okay. All right, so that is our first prompt. And if we go to modify this, we have our denoising up to 0.75. It's going to replace everything and put our, I have to, we're, we're going to be working at a 1024 by 1024 resolution. We don't need to use this exact resolution. This bottle that we have that we're going to convert is 1024 by 1024. And I just put it on a white background to that size. So this will give us our sort of starting point to work from. And here we have, yeah, the perspective is a little bit of a concern, but it's pretty cool. The fact that the model I'm using, an albedo base, knows what a Talisker bottle looks like with that distinctive shape, which is obviously part of the brand, and, and certainly we have to maintain that. That perspective is not quite right, but that's okay. Let's Let's work through all this. And because we want something similar, but we want to have our uh, a matching perspective. And we're going to go into Photoshop and open up this image and try to add that amazing background without having some type of reference. Because then you always get this. This always happens. This splashing comes out the side, despite this being pretty cool. And if you want to get rid of the white background, you have to say fill over here for mask content that is in this original image. And so the, again, this is pretty cool, except that that's not what we want. We want this splat. We want the bottle to look like it had dropped down on the table. All right. So you can see also this is not going to cut it. Right. There's obviously you know a big fade here, and uh, I mean while it's pretty good, it's not it's not exactly what we're looking for. We're going to bring this into Photoshop. We might use some of this. We might use the Coke. And I will bring all of these into Photoshop and I'll show you the layers. All right, back in Photoshop, we're gonna quickly just make a, uh, a layer mask for our, our bottle. We're gonna be probably using this later. I hide this and I just save this out as whiskey mask. Now we have our two bottle references. We have this one that fits perfectly to our subject. And the reason we need that is because we have to get the text in here properly. Uh, and the shape of the bottle accurate, but this has our this has our inspiration, right? So this is our um, more accurate because it's all the splashes are coming from the bottom, as opposed to this one, which is just sort of kind of an odd. Uh, I don't know, just a little bit weird. So it doesn't fit in there. 
we just simply have to put this bottle casually in our scene with a little bit of um, old school where we're just going to blend in the old bottle and then we're doing this like really making this super quick mask okay this becomes stage two where we've blended something together with our original bottle and it's important that we keep this original bottle uh, and i'll show you why later um, so i'm going to call this working two and now we have still all these prompts still stays the same and then we grab our working bottle okay and now we're going to reprocess it and expect to lose the text and expect to blend this stuff in here we're going to see if we can keep the bottle and if not then we'll use a mask and i'll show you how to do the mask but the idea here now is that we're, we're going to take this and sort of keep it really close to the subject because at high resolutions like this is not going to be okay we need to have it look like this but blend it into this water so you can see we're already making progress now the trick here will be to do a combination of denoising and this is where we're going to at some point really need to use the control net in order to maintain the shape of that bottle and we want it to blend so you can see we already have a good blend going on here now and what's really nice is that yeah it's picked up it's automatically blended in our our product pretty well I'm just worried about it losing the shape and the label that we need to come back and revisit so this is where we can generate a control net from this image um, I'm going to use canny in order to pick up the bubbles and some of this this stuff here and we can use everything the default but I want the control net to come off at the end smooth out this this portion because we did such a raw kind of really half-ass Photoshop job here so you can see that it's blended it in a lot better we certainly have maintained that shape that looks pretty good I don't see any major errors the backgrounds coming in nicer now we'll put this button here to send our new generation over and that way we can slowly improve through an iterative process of adding to our existing AI it's not just copying and pasting and putting it down I really want it to look like it was photographed within this scene and already you know this is looking this is this Photoshop job I did at the beginning here looks better we could if we wanted to we could take some of these bubbles and, and put them in here but so far I like that I'm gonna put bottle of talus did I spell talisker right yeah with fine bubbles and black background yeah photo real detail see I'm not using any negative prompts not necessary with, with this in this case now if I wanted to get a little I don't think that one worked as well it's not changing enough I'm gonna take my CFG so it pays more attention to the prompts and then down here I will say to the canny I want it to pay more attention to the prompt and I'm gonna remove down to 70% take my weight but then also just take a little bit off of the starting which can be really problematic things can you can just have things disappear when you do that because I have this little bit harsh kind of line at the beginning or down here this little this little bubble I don't really like but all right that looks great okay because it smoothed it out looks like the bottles blending in and we lost our text so now the thing we do is just simply open back up our original working file with the clean text but the unblended product and we're going to bring in our latest iteration and drag that over and now we're going to mask out all of the stuff that doesn't match and if you guys enjoy the video today and want to learn more consider checking me out at hallet-ai.com I'll leave the link below and I'll go through this watch in detail. I can't show you the top because I got a copyright strike on Facebook because of the branding, but I'll just show you real quickly that this is the sort of detail we get into uh, where I blend it in appropriately to a completely new AI background and change a lot of the details, but maintaining the, the text. Cheers, enjoy.
Now don't worry about the color, that's okay. We really just want to get all of that proper text back. Okay, we still, you can see that the bottle shape is maintained, but the, the, the lighting has completely adjusted. And that's, that's what we want. I mean, we're not just dropping this in here. The idea is to photograph. Now, if you noticed, a lot of product renderings really don't have the, um, they don't, they don't occlude some of these fine details down here. Oh, I didn't use a low, oh, I didn't use a high enough res image of a bottle. I didn't get that. That's not legible completely. All right, so that blue needs to come in a little bit more. But that's okay. What we're going to do is get that, that part of the bottle. Oh, a little bit of the bottle there. All right, so now that looks okay still. That blue didn't. I like the blue that it had, but also the that blue isn't the Talisker blue. It's a much de more desaturated. So that way I can... This way we're bringing in the product. Now we have this looking a lot more suitable to our original here. And we now need to just blend it in a little bit further. I want to make sure that the text is legible. Oh, I didn't use a high enough. Oh, I forgot to use higher, higher. I should have used a higher resolution original product rendering and lowered it and then did this. So I would do this normally in like in a 4K image, but work at this stage in 2K or 1K like I'm doing. And then when we go to paint this out uh, and scale it up, we wouldn't have these, uh, this un illegible text. Okay. All right. Well, it's an image off the internet. Maybe, yeah, for my subscribers, maybe I'll show you how to do a uh, 4K image at this resolution. But next thing we need to do is just simply process. Oh, we need to, we, we do need to upscale it so that we can finish this. So I'm going to take the finished product, Whiskey Working 3. Now we're going to bring it back into our image to image. We still have our same prompts. We're going to go and we're going to, we're going to high res it and fix it using my upscaling method from my previous video and maybe if I know how to use the YouTube thing I'll point a little put a little video where you can like match it and see it up there we're gonna go through real quick how do we do that we have to pick a 1.5 version model and we're gonna come down to our control net turn this off and put on or oh, turn it on and put on tile resample and then return our defaults balance come down here you should have ultimate SD upscale installed in the extensions and we're going to do a 1020 we'll do 768 everything else at the default uh, you notice that there was some pretty pretty good JPEG artifacts here so I'm going to use my favorite my favorite upscaler for that called JPEG destroyer and that's also in, I think that's, I think I made a video about that in there. So when you process this now, we're going to do a two times upscale. So we set our upscaler and then we're going to change the custom size and we will do, we'll do image from uh, scale from image. We can do 4k. This works really well. We just bring our denoise down. We've got our tile there. We bring our denoise and our CFG down to 4.5 and our denoising down to 3.34. Everything else is the same. Oh, we have to change our, do the SD Keras and, and we're done. There we go. That is a 4K. I brought it into Photoshop to show you. Resolution is 4K. You zoom in, everything looks pretty good. This compared to the original cleaned up, managed to fix those. Of course, we, we lost our, we lost some of our text here, which I mean, is to be expected. That's not legible. Again, I will do another product. I'll have to do another rendering uh, example for my subscribers. Yeah, a little bit of an error on the top there. 
Yeah, I would fix all of that up in a Photoshop post, but I think for a YouTube video, I'm going to call that a win. The point really was to show you to blend something in realistically with this approach that it's not just uh, uh, making a new background, which anybody can do, but it's about the highlights. That's the important part to me. This is not, it's not okay to use the same lighting conditions in a completely new environment. So there we go. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing, all that other shit, and uh, peace.